Chapter 31 Are You Afraid? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Alex was developing the next game to release after Minecraft. Of course, he wasn't going to release the Minecraft game as high as it was, he intended to do other events in Minecraft before releasing the next game so that the next game wouldn't be something that rivaled Minecraft and made the Minecraft audience choose to quit to play. Alex's idea was to first let Minecraft reach a large player base, and after the public clamored for more games he would release. But that didn't stop him from developing the next game. The idea he had was something much bigger than Minecraft, mainly in terms of gaming points. A game with a story for the player to get involved and at the same time with a lot of freedom to play and have fun. But to develop this he would need a lot of time. As much as the system could use his memories to develop the games, Alex noted that some things from his previous world could be changed to make it more pleasing to players in that world. Just as he did with Minecraft to make it bigger with world events, rankings, awards, and a virtual society, Alex also intended to do that with the next game. But that matter aside, Alex had a date today. Not as romantic as he didn't care about getting a girlfriend yet, after all, he didn't even know how he was going to get off this mountain, and he had a lot to occupy his mind. But the main reason is that the person he was going to meet was not someone he was romantically comfortable with, after all, the woman was known as Black Widow, and as the name suggests, the number of men who died from being in love with her it wasn't small. This time he would meet with her to see how the S.H.I.E.L.D. was reacting to Minecraft and find out what their intentions were, of course, without them knowing that he already knew their identity. It's almost time. Alex told himself as he looked at his watch. Before long, he closed the game development program and joined Minecraft. Hypixel City was much busier than it used to be. Minecraft sales were already close to 200,000 units, so you'd expect at least 30 plus players to be in town at busy times, after all, it was the biggest server in the game. A few smaller servers started to pop up, and one that Alex had the most fun watching was a server called 22BT, which made him remember 2B2T from his previous world and think of the coincidence that players from that world also use a name so similar to the that he already knew. A server of anarchy that players could do whatever they wanted. Of course, as it was a VR game, nothing related to obscenities or anything too heavy against another player's wishes was allowed in Minecraft, so if anyone did that they would be banned from Minecraft immediately, being forced to buy another copy of the game and this new one. Account would be kept under observation by the system to prevent something like this from happening in the future. As the city was busy, Alex expanded this and added entertainment methods for players. Emeralds that were nearly useless in single-player mode had good monetary value in Hypixel, making many players actively seek this or while playing in order to play with some things in Hypixel with friends. Entering a cafe run by a villager with artificial intelligence, Alex saw that it was empty and sat down at a table overlooking the window, to continue watching the players outside. Seeing these people playing and having fun around town gave an idea of a world event for Alex to do, after all, it was fun causing chaos while everything was so happy. Dot, may I ask the reason for the smile? A female voice came from beside Alex. He turned and saw the player, Natalia, or in her real name, Natasha Romanoff. I thought of a funny situation. You arrived early. Alex responded after seeing that Natasha had arrived five minutes before the scheduled time. But you arrived even earlier. Natalia replied with a smile because she arrived early and Notch was already here before her. I don't have a lot of work to do so I have some free time to wander around Hypixel. Alex replied. Natasha raised her eyebrow slightly. She thought he must have a lot of work to deal with these nearly 200,000 players, but apparently it wasn't all that much work. What do you work with? Natalia asked showing a lot of curiosity. Alex had to admit, this spy's acting is very good. If she applied to be an actress, with her looks she could definitely land the starring role in any movie. I have a farm. I'm not a big fan of busy places, other than Minecraft, of course, after all it's just a game here. 
Alex replied before asking Villager for a cup of coffee. At Hypixel there were exclusive foods and drinks, as well as coffee or juices. This type of food could not be obtained in normal Minecraft, which made many foodies play Minecraft just to look for emeralds to come and taste Hypixel foods. Oh I was thinking to myself Minecraft is a very magical place, is this really just a game? My friends even think this is something like another world. Natalia asked pretending to be really just speculating. But Alex knew that she was actually trying to get information from him, both about how Minecraft worked and whether he really was the creator of this game. Do you really think that? Well, it's not unfounded as it's very realistic. Alex replied. But considering the method of getting into the game, being able to do live stream and all that other stuff, I find it hard to think that it's not just a game. That makes sense, but I still can't stop doubting that Minecraft is just a game. Natalia commented she was taking the coffee that Villager brought her and Alex. Well, I've read some stories on the internet about games like that, but that was in the distant future. With the technology from Stark Industries, I don't doubt that this game could be something experimental for them and they're just trying to cover it up. Alex said a theory. Maybe, but as Tony Stark likes to show off, I find it hard for him not to say about this game anywhere. If this really was his he would have already told everyone about it and made a big splash about the game. Natalia gave a counterpoint. But are you afraid of the game? Alex asked Natasha with a smile on her face. Chapter 32 Tony Stark you are listening at novelfull.audio But are you afraid of the game? Alex asked Natasha with a smile on her face. Natasha saw Alex look deep into her eyes and felt insecure for the first time. She was used to handling many missions and her disguises were always perfect, it was almost impossible for anyone to distrust her, but seeing the way Notch was looking at her, Natasha really felt that this person knew who she was and what her intentions were. But after a second she composed herself and responded. Fear. Maybe humans fear the unknown, don't they? Maybe this could be something done by an evil person with impure intent. Alex let out a laugh. Yes, who isn't afraid? It's natural for humans to be afraid of things they don't know, that makes sense, but one thing I learned on my farm is that it's better to use the fear of tigers to build a fence so that the foxes don't kill the chickens. Often the tigers we're afraid of may even be killing the foxes without us knowing, but because of that tiger we have a fence that protects the chickens from less dangerous things. Natasha was shocked to hear this. If the analogy of what Notch said was true, it meant he was saying they might be afraid of Minecraft and try to protect themselves from it, but that there are dangerous enemies in the dark attacking all the time and they didn't even notice. The conversation was very pleasant Natalia, but unfortunately I have to feed my pigs now, I hope you have fun. Notch left after a few more minutes of conversation, leaving Natasha alone in thought. This conversation with Notch was very enlightening. At that point she was pretty sure Notch really was the creator of Minecraft, and that he knew she was part of the shield. That analogy of his was a warning to shield. You may fear me, but my help is needed, even if you don't know it. I have to report this. Natasha logged out of Minecraft and ran to Fury's room to report the entire conversation. Even though she recorded everything in secret via the game's camera system, still a personal report with her thoughts on the case was essential. Hey Tony, didn't you really make Minecraft? My superiors keep pestering me to find out the truth. A male voice came from the stairs. Tony Stark who was currently working on one of his armor turned angrily and answered. Rhodes, for the umpteenth time, I didn't make this damn Minecraft. James Rhodes came down the stairs with a frustrated expression as he looked at Tony. He knew that Tony hadn't made Minecraft, after all, if Tony had made the game it would probably be called Starkcraft. But still he had to ask again because of his superiors. Fine, I won't ask any more. But have you figured out how this game is made yet? Rhodes asked hopefully. Tony asked out loud. Jarvis, how is the Minecraft decoding process going? Suddenly, a robotic voice rang out from the workshop speakers. 
sir, only 1% was able to decode. Tony was shocked by this, he had asked Jarvis to decode Minecraft at Rhodes' request two days ago, he thought this would be an easy thing as apparently this was just a simple computer game. But he didn't think Jarvis wouldn't be able to decode just 1% of the game. What was decoded? Tony asked. Just the website, which looks like a simple sales page on the Steam platform but apparently has its own server that can't be analyzed or taken down. Not even my best DDoS attack had any effect, like you at it sometimes says, it was just a stone in the ocean. Dot. Jarvis replied in a robotic voice. Tony was shocked. He is known as the greatest genius of mankind, Jarvis is the best artificial intelligence ever invented, why this simple computer game cannot be analyzed by him. Ignoring Rhodes, Tony sat down in front of the nearest computer and decided to try decoding this game himself. The game download completed instantly and Tony soon began trying to hack the game file to try and get the information he wanted. But to Tony's surprise, he wasn't even able to access the game files. According to the program he developed for this, not even the software's protection language was understandable, apparently something far above what his program supported. Shit. How did he do that? Tony yelled in shock. Nobody knows, the Pentagon has already hired all the most famous hackers wanted by Interpool and none of them have even managed to decode the game page. It's surprising that Jarvis managed to do that in such a short time. Rhodes commented. Of course Jarvis is better than those nerds who just stay at home cloning rich people cards. Tony said proudly. But right after looking at the computer screen again and seeing that he couldn't decode any of this game he quickly lost that pride and felt frustrated. Do you think you can figure something out? Rhodes asked worriedly, as this was the first time he had seen Tony this frustrated about something. Dot Tony is a guy who always looks happy, always flaunting the money and intelligence he has at every possible opportunity. Even hacking into the courthouse computer where he was tried for possessing the Iron Man armor, but this trusting friend of his at the time was showing such frustration now that it was surprising. Do you have any questions? Of course I can do it, I just need a few more days to develop a better decoding program so it can understand this game's language and I'll tell you the news. Tony said confidently again. There's nothing in this world that I, Tony Stark, can't understand, and it's not going to be a simple computer game that's going to take that title away from me. Chapter 33 First skill you are listening at NovelFull.audio Alex needed a day to develop the event he was planning. This would be Minecraft's biggest event, as the game now has over 200,000 copies sold. With Minecraft sales alone, Alex had already earned approximately 20,000 gaming points, and considering VIP and DLC sales, that figure rose to approximately 30,000 gaming points. That was an amount Alex couldn't even dream of when he had just received the system, but now 1,000 gaming points could be earned very easily. Alex decided to look into the skill store and see if there was anything useful for him. Skills Shop, Dominic Toretto Driving Skills 3,000 Gaming Points Elf Breath 5,000 Gaming Points Deadshot Weapon Mastery 10,000 Gaming Points Gray Full Buster Ice Magic 100,000 Gaming Points Megumin Fire Magic 500,000 Gaming Points Natsu Dragneel Dragon Slayer Fire Magic 1 Million Gaming Points what little pride Alex took after seeing that he had 30,000 gaming points was drained after seeing that he didn't even have enough to buy ice magic. But among the things he could buy, there was something that caught Alex's attention. Curious, he asked the system for more details. Elf Breath 5,000 gaming points Description A style of meditation used by elves to absorb good properties from nature. This breathing has no direct effect in combat, but helps the user consume better nutrients from food, rest better during sleep and if used for a long time tends to increase the wearer's longevity. P.S. They say it has a beautifying effect. Alex was shocked by this ability, 
the price of it was too high considering that after converting it to dollars it would be the equivalent of $1 million. But after seeing the effect it had, Alex bought it without thinking twice. He knew a lot of things he wanted to do during the day, and having to sleep 10 hours every day was very limiting for Alex, so something like that was essential. Not to mention the effect of nourishing the body and increasing longevity. If something like this were put on the market, let alone $1 million, even a $1 trillion would be cheap. Purchase After buying this, a flurry of information surged through Alex's mind, much like the memory pills he had used to remember the details of Minecraft. In just a few minutes Alex found the perfect way to practice this elvish breath and put it into practice. Asterisk in, out, in, out, asterisk Alex spent 30 minutes in the lotus position and quickly felt the difference that breathing in this way made for his body. Compared to the way he breathed before, it was as if he now breathed the pure air of green farms whereas before it was as if he was breathing in a toxic waste sewer. It was difficult for Alex to explain in words, but in just 30 minutes of breathing like this Alex felt his body was ecstatic, thanking for the fresh air and gradually repairing the damage caused by the weather. Alex didn't have a way of measuring how much elven breathing had repaired his body and rejuvenated it, but he knew that if he breathed like this 24 hours a day for a few years, he would definitely age several times more slowly, i.e., holding that breath Elphica Alex could live several times longer. Seeing that this skill cost 5,000 gaming points and already had such a miraculous effect, Alex kept trying to buy other more expensive skills and see what it could do with him. But in the end he controlled himself and didn't buy anything else. He only had 25,000 gaming points now, and he would need that to make the next game. Basic RPG 5,000 gaming points Advanced RPG 50,000 gaming points Triple A RPG. 500,000 gaming points. He already had enough to make a basic RPG, but he wanted the next game to be something much bigger, so he intended to collect another 25,000 gaming points to develop an advanced RPG. As much as that was a very high amount of gaming points, with the amount of daily Minecraft sales, Alex calculated that he would need a maximum of two weeks to gather that amount, or if the event he held was well received by players, perhaps that time would be shortened to just a week. With a smile on his face Alex sat down at the computer and began to develop the event he would do for Minecraft. This would probably be the most memorable event in the game, as Alex intended to make this a main theme among the games he was going to make. Minecraft didn't have a story mode, but Alex intended to make one with this event. Hypixel would be invaded, players would need to fight to protect the city, or it would be destroyed and they would lose the features that made it so fun. Monsters would come from the skies, the earth, the underground, from everywhere. The villagers would be scared while the players would be the only ones able to protect the city. Players would need to band together against a powerful enemy that even controlled dragons like kittens. The amount of monsters attacking the city would be desperate, but Alex already had in mind a way to make the players manage to deal with that. Of course, he didn't intend to let players solve this problem, at most these players would be able to make the enemy back down, but with that Alex would be able to create the first story of the game, a story that would continue through the new games and that would make players shiver only to remember the enemy they would face. The enemy that would bring the world together, someone that perhaps not even Thanos could match. That enemy that would go against the Minecraft system, which appeared only once in history and which later became just a legend. Dot in a few days players would know despair, because Hero Brian would return. Chapter 34 Maybe one day. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Alex was very excited to make this event work, so for the next two days Alex just planned everything that would happen, and even when it would happen. For starters, Alex needed a moment where few players were online, but among those players there was someone recording what was going to happen. As Minecraft was a different VR game, many players tended to play Minecraft while they slept, as their bodies would go into sleep mode while their minds went to Minecraft, which was enough for people to do for a few days. But Alex had added a function in the game so that the player would be unable to play if he did it for three consecutive days, since the function of sleep was not only to rest the body, 
but also the mind, so to prevent players from going crazy, Alex only allowed them to play non-stop for three days before forcing them to sleep. As players tended to stay overnight in Minecraft, Alex found that the best time to run the event was 10.00. This was the time the children and teenagers were at school, and most adults were working. Of course, Minecraft became known around the world, but for now 80% of the Minecraft audience was still US, so relying on US weather was still the most effective way to calculate things for Alex. With a smile on his face Alex managed to complete everything after three days. The time to develop this event should have been one day less, but Alex was all the time thinking about keeping the elvish breath active, it was not hard to notice when he stopped using the elven breath, as the feeling of breathing in a sewer it came whenever he stopped. But always thinking about breathing that way was a lot harder than Alex imagined. He always forgot to use this breath and got dizzy from the bad feeling of breathing normally, causing him to have to stop developing the event and focus on elvish breathing again to clear the body of the impurities he inhaled. Dot when Alex slept he felt like he was being hugged by angels, having such a comfortable sleep that it was difficult to wake up, of course, other than the hours he woke up from stopping using elvish breathing. But after five hours of sleep, as much as Alex wanted to stay asleep, he couldn't do it anymore. His body was full of energy begging him to go do something to spend it. Unfortunately he couldn't develop the event with this excess energy, as he would just sit in front of the computer typing on the keyboard, which made him restless. To resolve this, Alex got up and left his little cabin. After the launch of Minecraft the only thing Alex did outside the cabin was gather some firewood to light the fireplace and warm up. Even though almost a month had passed since Alex had released Minecraft, the snow outside his cabin was still as thick as when he came to this world. Since he now knew he was in Marvel's world, Alex was curious as to why no one had found him yet. There are many powerful beings in this world, even one of the most powerful beings in the universe lived on Earth and had a big bald head. Alex thought the crone would come to talk, or rather interrogate him about Minecraft, but that never happened. Knowing the woman's personality, Alex knew that she had probably been trying to locate him for a long time, but if she hasn't come by now, it's probably because this place is isolated by something. The only thing Alex could think is that what is isolating this world from the outside is something System had done with some of the powers in it, but Alex didn't really care about that. At the moment the only thing he thought about was expending his energy, so with Elvish breathing active, Alex ran through the dark forest into the night at a speed he didn't even know he could reach. His body muscles were getting healthier every day, to the point where body fat was being consumed daily to tone his muscles, making Alex's body stronger than ever. Alex knew that in order to stay with the current body he was in, he would have to diet for several months while attending a gym with an intense workout. But with elvish breathing, Alex got the same result just by eating, sleeping, and exercising a little for those three days. And Alex knew that the longer he used elvish breathing, the healthier he would become. No wonder elves were so cute, with something as magical as this technique, it's impossible not to be cute. Alex told himself as he looked at his reflection in a large block of ice on the way back to his cabin. The sun was already rising, so Alex felt he needed to shower and get ready to start the event today. But there was something that made Alex a little suspicious. He had never gone as far from his cabin as he did today, and as he ran it was dark, which prevented him from seeing it, but now that the sun was rising, Alex could see perfectly well that there was a cave near his cabin, a cave he had never noticed. What's inside this cave? Maybe a bear. Alex wondered as he approached the cave. But the closer he got to the cave, the more elvish breathing told Alex that too much foul air was coming from inside. It wasn't impurity as something evil, but as if too many mineral molecules were in the air, which would be very bad for anyone who breathed it. Is this pollution? Alex wondered in surprise as he felt it. Until a hunch came to Alex's mind. Could this be a tunnel to a city? After all the city air has a lot of carbon monoxide. Alex wondered with a hand on his chin. He was tempted to go into that portal and see which city was on the other side, 
but he knew that right now there could be many powerful humans trying to find him, and since his body was more powerful these days, he wasn't even close to power. Scratching these powerful humans. Going through it would put me at unnecessary risk. Maybe I'll go through it when I have enough strength to protect myself. Alex said to himself with a determined look before turning away and heading back to the cabin. On the way home, Alex turned to the cave with longing in his eyes, but every time he just gave up and tried to ignore it. It was something very tempting for a person who had been isolated for almost two months to be able to get in touch with civilization again, but for now he intended to be content only with contact with other people through Minecraft. Maybe one day. Alex sighed. Chapter 35 The attack has begun you are listening at novelfull.audio. After showering and eating a system breakfast, Alex sat in front of the computer and prepared to start the event he was planning. Alex planned this event to last seven days, and after those seven days the trailer for the new game would be released to players. Even though Alex still didn't have enough gaming points to start making the game, he had already planned out most of the features the game would have and the things he would need to change to make it work in this world, so the development process would be fast. And with the hype he was planning for this event, Alex was sure that Minecraft sales would take off and before seven days he would already receive the remaining gaming points to develop the game. It was 9.50 am, of the 200,000 people who bought Minecraft, at that time there were only approximately 27,000 people online in the game. That's considering people playing single-player mode, Hypixel and private servers. Considering that at peak hours the game had over 150,000 people online, it was now one of the times with the fewest players. But that was exactly what Alex wanted. With a smile on his face, Alex used the Hero Brian account and logged into Hypixel. Wong and the Sorcerers of Kamar Taj were part of that small amount of players that was online in Minecraft. As this was the crone's task, every day they logged into the game to try to learn about Thaumcraft's magic. And since they had no obligations like work or school, these disciples basically spent the entire day at the game. But as it was so tiring just to be on a private server they bought to study magic together, sometimes they would log into Hypixel to eat some game food, or even play the mini. Games that the server had. With the release of Thaumcraft and Industrial Craft, it became easier for players to kill Ender Dragon using the resources that came in these DLCs, so the population of players playing Skyblock had increased a lot as more players got the Ender Dragon egg. And Kamar Taj's disciples got addicted to playing Skyblock too. The economy system of this mini dot game was amazing. It should be known that to be accepted as a disciple of Kamar Taj it was necessary that one had a very important destiny, both great entrepreneurs and geniuses in some area were common to see in that place, so when they killed Ender Dragon and started to playing Skyblock, you could say they have become one of the main groups there. Hey Wong, did you manage to find out anything about magic tonight? A disciple asked with a frustrated expression. They had already tested it and found that Thaumcraft's magic really wasn't impossible to do in the real world, but even with that finding, putting it into practice was an entirely different matter. I've tested a few things and I think I've made a very important breakthrough, maybe in a few weeks I'll be able to make a practical Thaumnomicon. Of course, I'm still not sure if that will work, but if it's really true, this could be a revolution for human magic. Wong said excitedly. Humans in the Marvel Universe couldn't control magic and generate it on its own, forcing users to sign contracts with demons or extract magic from other planes in order to do something. But with the knowledge they received from Thaumcraft, it was quite likely that they could finally start using magic for even more amazing things in the future, and might even stop relying on other dimensions someday. Boom a huge explosion sounded, alerting all players who were resting on the Hypixel. Dot players were shocked, those who play Minecraft have already got used to explosions, as dying to creepers was a frequent occurrence for players, even playing with TNTs was something they did with ease. But this time it was different, the explosion that happened was something on a much larger scale. Looking around, players saw something they couldn't believe. Around the city of Hypixel was a great wall that players were never able to scale. Even though many tried, there were no blocks to hold up to the top, 
just leaving players stuck there with doubts about what it was like on the other side of that wall. But now something they never imagined has happened. In the Great Wall there was a hole. Wong was shocked and looked around confused, the other players didn't know what to do either. Suddenly a notification popped up in front of all Minecraft players, even players on private servers or players in single-player mode. Dear citizens of Hypixel, the city is under attack by an unknown force. Please help protect Hypixel. What? The city is under attack. The disciple beside Wong screamed in fear. That was the reaction of the thousands of Minecraft players, they thought that Hypixel was a comfortable and cozy place that the Minecraft developers had made for them to rest, but who would have thought that this place could be attacked? The quest, Protect Hypixel, has been activated. If you want to participate in the quest, enter Hypixel and help protect the city. If players manage to defend the city from the invasion of the unknown enemy, everyone who participates in the defense will receive a gold limited cape, embroidered with, Hypixel Defender. If before players were just scared about this invasion, now their mindset has shifted 180 degrees. Especially after reading the word limited referring to the cover. Almost every player had seen one of the players wearing the Ender Dragon cape proudly parading around town, and they were frustrated that they couldn't have a cape as cool as this one, but now the opportunity has arisen. They knew that almost every player would accept the task, so almost everyone would be given a cape like that and it wouldn't be as special as the Ender Dragon cape, but with the speed that Minecraft was growing, soon new players arrived, and then who wouldn't be jealous of their covers. Let's fight! A player shouted excitedly. Chapter 36 X.Men meeting you are listening at novelfull.audio The X.Men were startled and a summons came from Professor Xavier for everyone to gather in the mansion room. Most students studied at the mansion with private lessons from mutant teachers, only a small minority went to regular school. So when Professor Xavier called everyone together, they were worried, it already had to be something very urgent to call the more than 100 people at the institute. Hey guys, is Magneto taking a hostage town? Evan asked as he approached. Kurt thought for a moment and replied. Something like that is probably going on, otherwise the teacher wouldn't interrupt everyone's classes. I'm happy, our next class would be with Mr. Logan, so missing one of his classes is cause for joy. Kitty said with a big smile on her face. As they walked to the conference room all the students started speculating about what was going on. Some thought Magneto was attacking humans, others thought some new enemy had emerged, there were even some students worried that people had discovered they were a school for mutants. Until Rogue, better known as Anna, screamed in fear. Hypixel is being attacked. When the students heard this they were all shocked. What do you mean Hypixel is being attacked? Does the government want to take down Minecraft? A student screamed in fear. It cannot be. A girl screamed. No, Hypixel City is under attack. Anna yelled to warn the others. Hearing this they were momentarily relieved, until they remembered how big the walls of Hypixel were and thought of what must be happening for Hypixel to be attacked. Who is attacking? A girl who was normally very shy asked angrily. Even Anna was scared by the reaction of this girl who was always sweet and cute to everyone. But she still responded with a bit of fear. No one knows who it is, but there are two ender dragons flying over Hypixel while zombies and skeletons have broken through the wall and started to invade the city, but players are thinking it might be a person. She said as she continued to watch the news on the internet. Who? Students asked apprehensively. But before Anna could respond, a familiar voice answered before her as she entered the conference room. Hero Brine. Professor Xavier said in a serious voice. Dot the students were shocked by Professor Xavier, they didn't even know he played Minecraft. Professor. Why do you know that? Anna asked a little confused. She already knew that the professor played Minecraft, but she didn't think he cared so much about the game that he already knew this news. 
According to the website she was reading, the city had started being invaded ten minutes ago, shouldn't the professor have been worried about Magneto's actions since he called the meeting? Unless. Anna was shocked to imagine something. Because that's why I called all of you here. I know that among the Xavier Institute students, pretty much all of you play Minecraft, and I realized how well this game does for the entire mutant community, since in Hypixel everyone they can act like everyday people and even interact and befriend other people without worrying about their own safety. I heard about the Hypixel invasion five minutes ago, so I called you all over. Professor said in a serious voice. Upon hearing this Anna felt that what she imagined was really right. The students were still surprised to know that the teacher thought so highly of Minecraft, but as they remembered the friends they made, and the happy times they had in the game with other strangers, they felt that the teacher's words really made sense. Professor, you summoned us to. Not even Scott Summers, who was the leader of the younger X. Men believed that Professor Xavier had summoned everyone to what he was imagining. But when the teacher responded they finally believed it. Yes, I called everyone to ask you to join Hypixel and help defend the city, I will also connect so we can fight humanity together and defend that place that has always treated us so well. Professor Xavier had a big smile on his face, and the confidence he displayed inspired the students. Before they just saw Minecraft as a much more fun game than the others, but after hearing the teacher's words they finally understood how important it was, and they didn't want to let Hypixel be destroyed by anyone. Let's go. Kurt yelled excitedly. You can count on me. Evan was also excited. And with me. Also with me. Soon the students ran back to their own rooms to access personal computers to play, other students went to the library, even to some classrooms to play games, as not everyone had their own computer and all the public computers in the house were busy. At that time more than 100 mutants connected to Minecraft to help defend Hypixel. And it wasn't just at Mansion X that people gathered to help defend Hypixel, in some communities, companies, many industries stopped what they were doing to help in the Hypixel battle. Even S.H.I.E.L.D. dispatched some agents to fight in the Battle of Hypixel, on the one hand to get more information about this mysterious game and what was going on, and on the other hand to protect the city that provided various strength potions for them all. Weeks. People who didn't know what was going on were confused as they walked around town and saw some stores being hastily closed. Some people even thought that the towns they lived in were being attacked, but when asked why the stores closed they were even more confused. Hypixel is being attacked. Why is this so important to you? Are you giving employees time off because you have to play? What kind of boss are you? What the hell is Hypixel? Chapter 37 Hypixel Defense You are listening at NovelFull.audio The East Wall has been invaded, we need people to help defend. A player came running to the town square. Here, in the town square, several famous players were gathered. Most of these players are known through the Hunger Games rankings or the Skyblock rankings. Among these players, all were wearing colored capes. But among these people there were some who had more prestige than others, and these were the people who wore black capes with purple accents, the Cape of Ender Dragon. We're going to send Team 38 there, they just defended the West Wall and got a lot of powerful items. Shuri said with a serious expression, as if she really was an experienced general of a large army, which contrasted a lot with her cute appearance. When monsters started to invade, players didn't have equipment to fight these monsters, so they just punched until they killed the monsters. But luckily they found that killing monsters was dropping items like swords and armor, which made it much easier to kill more and more monsters. Initially players were just attacking without any coordination, until Ned the King started issuing some orders for more efficient ways to attack and players started listening to his tactics to improve the city's defense. Unfortunately, Ned was just an ordinary student, so his tactics were limited to just the war strategy games he had played before, but soon other players with Ender Dragon cloaks came up next to him and they started arguing about tactics, even that a small chain of command has formed between the players. If this were another game, Players would hardly listen to other players and just act as they pleased, but this was Hypixel. 
Here they really saw and interacted with other people in person, a place where they could have a lot more fun than traveling to other countries, so nobody wanted to do something wrong and be the cause of the downfall of this magical city. All right, Team 38, please go to the West Gate and help the teams there defend the wall, don't let any monsters invade. Ned yelled to the 38 players, who soon ran to the West Gate holding the stone swords they received from killing monsters. The players soon discovered that the attack was being carried out in waves. The first wave gave players wooden swords, the second wave gave players stone swords, the third wave they didn't know yet. Those dragons haven't attacked yet. A man with long black hair said with a thoughtful expression. That his nickname was, Teacher. Yes, as with each attack wave the equipment is improving, maybe these dragons only attack after players have diamond swords. A woman replied. Her nickname was, Natalia. Has anyone gotten a bow yet? Dealing with dragons without bows will be a suicidal task. A white dot haired black woman commented. Her nickname was, McQueen. Not yet, so far the amount of skeletons in the waves was very low, none of them dropped a bow. But maybe in the next waves this could be higher. Ned replied. Reporting to the leaders, 200 more players have connected in the town square and want to help in the battle. A player arrived at the command center with an excited expression. Because of this player's cape, people might think he was also part of the player's command team, as he wore an ender dragon cape, but this player only spent a few minutes in the command center and got really bored before he decided to go out and help the fight into their own hands. This player's nickname was, P. Parker. Ned and Peter were at school when the Hypixel attack started, but when they found out what was going on, the two ran away because they were sick and managed to escape classes very easily. As both had very high grades, it was not difficult to convince the teacher to release them to go home. Very well, take them to the weapons warehouse and tell them to each get a wooden sword, if they get a stone sword they must return the wooden sword to the warehouse, and let them know about sword donations. Ned said with a smile to Peter. Okay. Peter responded excitedly before running back to spawn and taking the players to the warehouse. Players had obtained many wooden swords in the first wave, and when they received stone swords from the second wave, the leaders decided to save the wooden swords for new players who wanted to do battle, while the surplus stone swords would be stored for the players to use after they die. When they died the swords they used disappeared, so they always needed more weapons. P. Parker took the new players to the warehouse and each received a wooden sword from the player named, Milaj02. They were in charge of the warehouse as they were very smart and disciplined. Did Team 01 manage to kill the boss? Shuri asked Professor Xavier. I haven't heard from them yet, but I trust those players' sense of battle. Professor replied with a smile. Team 01 was the X.Men team. Among them were Kurt, Scott, Jean, Anna, Kitty and Logan, who just wanted to fight and kill monsters. Xavier, Aurora and Hank were at the command line. Boom fireworks sounded in the center of the city, which made players scream in excitement and start attacking the monsters even more excitedly. When players killed the first wave boss, fireworks sounded in celebration, so as it happened again this can only mean that Team 01 managed to kill the second boss as well. I think we have our answer, Princess. Professor replied with a smile. Yeah, glad you got it. Shuri aka Princess responded happily. Players soon finished killing the monsters as they regrouped in the center of town to hear their next orders. After each wave the players had 15 minutes to rest and shower in real life if they needed to, so this was also the time they would gather to discuss new ideas. At this point, while the players were talking seriously downtown, Alex was flying invisible through the city with a smile on his face, he was prepared to implement the second part of his plan. Chapter 38 Hero Brian appears you are listening at novelfull.audio. While players had 15 minutes of rest, Alex was controlling a new feature he added to Minecraft and no one knew. Until the second round, there were only normal monsters that attacked the walls, and a bigger monster that represented the boss, 
with more health, more damage and more speed than normal monsters. But for Alex it was just an entrance to the grand feast. He had planned that today there would only be three waves of monsters, so players would spread about what happened in the city and that would bring in even more players to help defend the city the next day. But to end the day's attack well, Alex had planned something special. In his old world there was a very famous Minecraft mod called Mutant Mobs, which basically added mutant mobs much more powerful than normal game mobs. Initially Alex intended to use these mobs as the bosses of each wave, but then he dropped that and decided to make it something special, as he intended to make it big, so with a smile on his face, Alex finished preparing the scene he had. He imagined and flew out of town before becoming visible again. The players had divided up the items they had collected and were all very confident for the next wave of monsters. Until suddenly thunder sounded. Boom the players were startled, as a few seconds ago it was still daylight, but after the thunder the game turned into night and they could only see two small white dots floating in the sky. What is that? Maybe it's two stars. But there are no other stars, the sky is clear. So I don't know. Suddenly the two white dots approached and the players could finally see what it was. Is that that is a player? A player asked in surprise. That looks like a Steve. Another player commented. But he doesn't have a name on top of his head. Another player said. I know. It's Hero Brian. A player screamed in shock. Wait, is Hero Brian real? Players were surprised by this. Looking up at the sky they saw a Steve with bright eyes and no pupils, this perfectly matched the description of Hero Brian they had heard about, and even the look and feel of the video they saw. Unlike players with skins that looked like Herobrine, which only left the pupil white, this Herobrine's eyes were really glowing. At this point a creepy music started playing in the background causing some players to start shaking. But before it got too heavy, Herobrine started talking. So it means that you are the ants that are protecting the Hypixel. Hearing this the players were even more scared. Herobrine's voice was very low and full of noises as if it was being modulated by some program, but players knew that it was impossible for something like this to happen in Minecraft, so they thought that this was really a voice from hell. Huh, too bad, so many ants willing to die to protect my city. Don't worry, after I destroy this I'll make a city even better. Hero Brian said with a disturbing smile. But you won't be welcome. He yelled causing another thunder to fall from the sky. At this point the players were really scared, to the point that some even dropped their own swords in fear of fighting this enemy. But at that moment, on the one hand the sky started to lighten again and Herobrine frowned. Stop brother. You know you don't have to do this. A familiar voice sounded very sad. Many players were confused because they already knew this voice but couldn't remember who it was. Until they saw another figure flying in the sky and were shocked. Is this that is notch? A player yelled. Upon hearing this player's scream, players soon realized that it really was Notch who was flying in the sky. Most players knew Notch and liked him a lot, as he always helped others, and even players who never met Notch had heard of this player from their friends. But they were very confused about why Notch could fly, after all, no player could fly in Hypixel other than when playing Build Battle. So he really is the creator of this world. A calm, friendly voice said to himself with a satisfied smile on his face. BDNVL.M, teacher, but because of the silence that was in the area, all the other players heard it too and were shocked by this revelation. No one knew who the creator of Minecraft was, and there were even some people who speculated it was Notch, but no one really believed it. But seeing him flying in the sky now was the biggest proof of that they could have. Notch really is the creator of Minecraft. Players were shocked again. But why did he call Herobrine his brother? Soon this question arose in everyone's minds, but Herobrine screamed angrily preventing that thought in the players' minds. Shut up. Don't ever call me that again. Herobrine yelled angrily and more lightning began to appear, causing the sky to turn dark again. 
but Notch let out a sad cry and warded off the darkness once more. You will always be my brother. Notch yelled sadly. Misks, deal with these ants. Hero Brian screamed angrily as he made countless rays fall from the sky. Where lightning strikes, dozens of zombies would appear and run frantically into the city. Soon the players realized what was happening and started to defend themselves. Brothers, defend Hypixel. Don't let Hero Brian destroy our city. Ned screamed like a king, making all the players around him squeal together as they ran towards the monsters with their eyes gleaming. They realized that Notch and Hero Brian had a deeper story and were dying to know what that story was, but the monster attack didn't allow these players to just watch and made them rush to defend the city. Boom until a huge beam fell to the ground, causing several blocks around to be destroyed. In that place a giant zombie with huge muscles appeared. Zombie. Smash. The zombie screamed with madness as it ran towards the players at a very fast speed and killed every player in its path. Notch and Herobrine began fighting in the sky until they slowly flew away from the city as they fought. Players were excited to see what would happen and fought with all their might, but on the other hand, in a remote city in Brazil, an American man was shocked while looking at a live stream on his cell phone. Is that that ISA Hulk? Dr. Bruce Banner wondered in disbelief as he saw the mutant zombie attacking the players. Chapter 39 End of the battle you are listening at NovelFull.audio After Notch and Herobrine left the player's view, Alex made Notch's body disappear and became invisible again. He programmed the game so that every few minutes some thunder would erupt in the direction they came out, so players would think that there really was a huge battle going on there. And after that calmly flew back to the city while he was invisible. As he flew back to town, Alex looked at the amount of spectators who were watching this. Ned the King. 72,145 viewers, Shuri. 37,484 viewers, Crawler. 9,526 viewers. When the event started, there were 20,000 Minecraft players, now there were 70,000 players defending the city. Probably the rest of the players who weren't in the game were watching the live streams, and this has made Minecraft streamers soar up the Twitch rankings, drawing even more audiences to the player streams, thus snowballing more people. Attracted more people. Alex looked curiously at Crawler's live stream comments to see what people were saying. Damn, is this a movie with several different views on each live stream? This is amazing, it's better than the movie I saw in the cinema today. I'm going to call my girlfriend to my house to watch Minecraft. So on this live stream the movie character is a frontline warrior. While the live streams above are people from the command line. This is amazing. I've never seen a movie like this. Hero Brian and Notch seem to be brothers. What an incredible plot. The population of this town thought that Notch was just an ordinary person but found out that he is a god in disguise among them. Alex was confused reading these comments. Are these people thinking this is a movie? He wondered not knowing what to do. Until some comments emerged explaining the situation. Guys, this is not a movie, this is the PC game. Anyone can participate in this story and fight alongside these people, they are all players, just look for Minecraft on Steam. Guys, this is not a movie, this is the PC game. Anyone can participate in this story and fight alongside these people, they are all players, just look for Minecraft on Steam. The person who commented on this was a livestream moderator, who had to send this message multiple times in the chat so viewers could see it. Kurt had told this moderator to explain to the audience what was going to happen while he focused on the battles, as Kurt was on Team 01 and couldn't help but pay attention to the battle. After these comments, viewers were shocked by this information and quickly searched Minecraft on Steam to see if it was true. When they saw that this really was a game they didn't think twice and paid the $20 to participate. The average game price was $60 to $70 for each game, so being able to play Minecraft that looked so amazing for just $20 was something they didn't even hesitate before doing. 
Alex soon noticed that the Minecraft sales number was going up really fast, probably because it was happening across all the live streams, which made him very happy. That was exactly his purpose for this event, to make the game even more famous to attract a lot more players. Alex looked again at Crawler's stream and saw that while fighting Mutant Zombie, there were two very skilled players with a lot of synergy. Wolverine, and, Sabretooth. If it was before knowing which world he was in, Alex would probably just think that these two players were great friends who had been training together for a long time, but knowing that this was Marvel's universe, Alex has already discovered the identity of these two players. But still he was shocked at the synergy they had and how well they fought together. Though he could hear the two of them cursing and mocking each other as they battled the boss, Alex knew they had spent at least 100 years fighting together, so they knew each other well enough to cooperate in battle without even realizing it. Maybe Minecraft brings these two brothers together. Alex wondered with a smile on his face before closing Kurt's live stream. The mutant zombie Alex made was much tougher and more powerful than the mod from his previous world, so players had to fight death for almost two hours until the zombie was almost dead. But the less life the zombie had, the stronger it got, which made the battle even more difficult. You could say that in this battle, if it weren't for Logan and Victor, the battle would probably take twice as long. But Alex knew it was time for the show to end, it was better to end this battle before the players got tired or bored, after all, this was just a game. So just before Mutant Zombie died, Alex made Notch appear next to him and went back to acting like he was Hero Brian. Aragai, Notch, I'll be back and with a much stronger army next time. Hero Brian yelled as he held his apparently injured arm, drawing the attention of the players around him, who smiled with great satisfaction when they saw that Notch had won. Soon a great thunder engulfed the mutant zombie and made the monster disappear, just as it did with Hero Brian, leaving only the weaker smaller zombies that died after a short time. Dot the players started to scream with happiness to see that they had actually defended Hypixel. But soon that happiness crumbled when they looked up. Cough Notch, who had a confident posture as he looked at the place Hero Brian had disappeared to, coughed up a large amount of blood as he quickly flew to the top of one of the buildings surrounding the square. The players froze upon seeing this scene, they had seen how powerful Hero Brian was and so many things he could do, but seeing how confident Notch came back they thought everything was fine. But when they saw Notch cough up blood they froze. Apparently this battle didn't go so well. Soon Notch said in a tired voice. Guys, he's stronger than I thought. Cough cough. This battle that has weakened me too much, maybe I won't be able to deal with him next time he comes. For now, I'll allow you guys bring armor to Hypixel to prepare for the next battle. Please call friends for help, otherwise, I think we're going to lose our city. Notch said before collapsing on the roof of the building, out of sight of the players before turning invisible and disappearing. Alex was already invisible in the sky as he watched Notch perform and the players' reactions. When he saw the players' despair, a smile appeared on Alex's face. Yes, that's what I want, be afraid and bring help. He thought excitedly. Chapter 44 is already released on Patreon. Patreon.com slash NunuXD Chapter 40 Heimdall was scared you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Now for the news of the day. Hypixel was attacked, thousands of residents died in the battle, but in the end, the citizens of Hypixel still managed to defend the city against the monsters that attacked the place. Heimdall was confused after seeing a Midgardian woman telling the news of what was happening on her planet. Heimdall was known for having the ability to see even creation, but in order not to be overwhelmed by the unimaginable amount of information, he limited himself to just observing Asgardians traveling to other worlds. Of course, so as not to get bored, Heimdall sometimes watched other civilizations and enjoyed learning interesting things. One of the things that Heimdall was interested in was television, more specifically the Midgardian news channel, as on these news channels he could know the most important things happening on that planet without needing to expend a lot of strength. But today Heimdall was confused by what he saw on the Midgardian news. Did a war happen? A city was invaded and thousands of Midgardians died. 
Heimdall wondered confused as he looked around the planet but couldn't find anything the woman was saying on the news. This is weird, maybe this is false information. For those of you who don't know what I'm saying, this battle took place in a game called Minecraft. This is a game that is becoming quite popular around the world, to the point that during the attack on the city of Hypixel today, several stores around the world closed so that the owners could battle and defend the beloved city. Heimdall raised an eyebrow in astonishment upon seeing this. On television the Midgardian was showing several images of the battle, and despite the odd square appearance of the images, even Heimdall couldn't see much of a difference between these images and reality. From what he heard of this Midgardian's explanation, this was a technology far ahead of time on this planet, which allowed Midgardians to go to another dimension and fight without worrying about death. Heimdall was petrified, the more he listened to this Midgardiana explaining about this game and the effects this game was having on Midgard, the more Heimdall felt this matter was getting more serious and that he should inform all father as soon as possible. Especially after Heimdall tried to use his vision to try to see this other dimension called Minecraft and found he couldn't see it. It is known that in the thousands of years that Heimdall protected Bifrost, there was never anything Heimdall couldn't see in all nine realms. And now he knew of the existence of another dimension and found that he couldn't see anything from that dimension. Maybe in this dimension there might be powerful enemies just waiting for the perfect moment to attack Asgard, and until a few minutes ago they didn't even know about the existence of this dimension. Before going to report to All Father, Heimdall continued watching the news to gather as much information as possible and saw something that left him even more shocked. Dot in the videos shown by the Midgardian woman, Heimdall saw two unknown gods. Little is known about the reason for the battle that took place in Hypixel, but what players have discovered is that apparently the world of Minecraft was created by Notch and Herobrine who are brothers, but something happened between them that caused Herobrine to get angry of Notch and wanting to kill all the humans and take Hypixel for himself. Fortunately Notch fought Herobrine while letting the citizens of Hypixel deal with the strongest monsters, but from what Notch told players, the upcoming battles will be even tougher. So as the person in charge of our newspaper's culture board, I recommend for adventure. Thirsty people to buy Minecraft and have fun with the family playing this game, maybe you'll have a few hours of fun playing this. Heimdall didn't pay attention to the part where Midgardiana was explaining that this was just a game and that this was just a cultural recommendation for Midgardians, he had been shocked to see the mighty battle between Notch and Herobrine and all the hair on his body stayed goosebumps. At one point he imagined himself fighting those two gods and many times he couldn't even see himself being able to do any harm to those gods, as in just a small fraction of their battle, dozens of houses were destroyed and even the thunder, something that only the prince of Asgard Thor had the right to command was being used in battle. Are they gods with the ability to steal deities? Or maybe just use deities from other gods? It's still extremely important, I should go immediately inform the All-Father of what's going on so he can prepare for a possible battle. Heimdall was determined and quickly left Bifrist after a long time and ran towards Odin's palace. While Heimdall was scared of Notch, Herobrine, and especially the Minecraft, Dimension, the creator of it all, Alex, was sitting in front of his computer while watching Ned's live stream as he sipped a milkshake without even having a clue that the event what he planned was having such a huge impact on the world, and even on other worlds. For him, the only thing that mattered right now was selling more copies of Minecraft and accumulating more gaming points to develop his next game. Just as he imagined it would be, this event was a huge thing, as it caused Minecraft to sell tens of thousands of copies in just the first few hours, a number that will likely increase further once the word gets out. What a yummy milkshake. I'm glad I decided to try it today. Alex said happily as he continued to drink the milkshake lying in the chair not knowing that several world leaders were having an extremely important discussion because of the game he played. Chapter 46 is already released on Patreon. https forward slash forward slash patreon.com slash nunuxd.